Hi everyone, Abhijit Manhas here. Uh, hope everybody's keeping safe during these uncertain times. I think just because of the amount of time we are spending uh, inside, this is as good as time as any to start my own YouTube channel. Uh, just as a medium to share information, put out some videos, something which I've been doing in my blogs for a while now, but I think I'll start my own YouTube channel with more exercises and other uh, rehab related videos. So today's topic of discussion is going to be shoulder impingement. Uh, well, a lot of you see a lot of patients coming in with shoulder issues and a lot of times the diagnosis for this is shoulder impingement. The reason we want to discuss this a little further is because it's not as simple. What impingement truly means in textbook definition is impingement or entrapment of one of the sh rotator cuff muscles between two bony ends of the shoulder every time you're trying to raise our arm up. Now, impingement itself is not a pathological issue because every time we raise our arms up in a healthy shoulder, we are always impinging the muscle itself. It's when there is excessive impingement, uh, which starts to uh, cause shoulder pain, maybe partial strain or, or tear of the muscles is when it becomes a real problem. The reason we need to break this down even further is just because um, we need to be really specific in our profession as to what we are exactly dealing with. Now that this all-encompassing term has been thrown around all the time, we need to be more specific with our diagnosis because a lot of times our treatment is going to depend on what kind of impingement there is. And as we all know, there's more than one impingement that is out there. So instead of using just shoulder impingement, let's classify this a little more. So they, basically there are two types of impingements. Uh, the first one is external impingement, which is also often referred to as subacromial impingement or bursal impingement. And the second one is internal impingement, which is also called as articular sided impingement. Uh, let's delve into that a little further. So as you can see, this is a hand drawn picture of what the shoulder joint looks like from the inside. Right in front of us here is basically the humerus, which is the arm bone. Uh, at the end of the arm bone is like a ball which fits nicely into the socket, which is the glenoid cavity right here. We have the rotator cuff muscles that are running right in between the acromion process right here and the head of the humerus. And this is the direction of the rotator cuff muscle. Oftentimes, the impingement can happen right at this region here where the muscle is passing in between this really tight space and is compressed between the acromion up top and the humerus below. Now, the external impingement or the subacromial or the bursal impingement is the impingement that happens more on the top side or the superior aspect of the shoulder, as you can see right here. Uh, it's also called as bursal surface just because there is a there is a bursa which is right here which acts like a little cushion between um, the muscle and the bone. On the other hand, internal impingement or the articular surface impingement happens more inferiorly right around here. The reason it's called articular is because the impingement happens between the superior, posterior superior aspect of the glenoid and uh, the undersurface of the rotator cuff. So as you can see, it is not the top part of the rotator cuff, but it's the one that is below. So on the next video, we're going to discuss various reasons uh, why somebody could have impingement and how to differentiate if it is primary or, um, uh, sorry, if it is external impingement or internal impingement and what are the various reasons for it. Hope you enjoy this video.